chapter 12, have patience. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations 3, 25, 26. As you fervently pray, identify Bible promises, and give thanks for your marriage, be sure to hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Make a firm decision to have patience and keep looking to the Lord to save your spouse and your marriage. Consider the words of Jesus found in Mark 4, 28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. At the right time, God's power and generous gifts of rain, air, and sunshine can cause seeds to germinate. This same power can cause your marriage to be restored. So have patience. Luke 8.15 tells us, The seed is the word of God. Let us sow the good seed in our hearts by believing, prayerfully studying, memorizing, and practically applying God's word. If we bountifully sow God's word in our hearts, we shall bountifully reap. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. God promises that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish what he pleases and prosper where he sends it. Isaiah 55, 11. As we patiently do our part sowing God's word in our hearts, God will do his part and cause his word to go forth and produce results in our lives and in our marriages. Let's learn some practical lessons from seed sowing. My family and I enjoy the taste of freshly picked, homegrown produce, so we started a small garden a few years ago. We often start our seeds on a table in our family room near a couple of large windows. Even though the seeds are in the soil and hidden from our sight, we continue to water them because things are happening beneath the soil that we can't see. As the days, weeks, and months pass, we must patiently wait for the plants to germinate, grow, and ripen. At the appointed time, our patience pays off and we are rewarded with luscious, flavorful produce that surpasses what's typically found in your average grocery store. Can your husband's heart be compared to soil with the seed buried beneath the surface? Yes, it may look like nothing is happening, but you don't know how the Holy Spirit is moving upon the soil of your husband's heart. So you must have patience. Step out in faith and plant abundant seeds of love and kindness in your husband's life. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Ecclesiastes 11.6 As you patiently endure challenging circumstances, believe God's promise that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Psalms 126, 5. Let's learn another lesson from seeds. Seeds have needs. In order to ensure proper development, we try to provide the right soil, the right temperature, and sufficient water for our seeds. If the needs of the seeds are met, we can expect to see sprouts in about a week. After six to eight weeks, we should have seedlings that are ready to be transplanted. I say should because sometimes our plants don't make it past the seedling stage. There are several reasons seedlings fail to thrive, but in our home, the top three reasons are too little water, too much water, or too much handling by curious little boys. Unfortunately, there are times when my sons get tired of waiting and they pluck the tender seedling out of the soil. Their impatience causes them to lose some of the rewards that await the patient gardener at harvest time. Can these gardening lessons apply to your marriage? Yes. Have you ever been tempted to give too little water by failing to share kind words or deeds with your husband? Have you ever been tempted to drown the tender seedling with a flood of angry, impatient words? Have you ever been tempted to pluck the tender seedling, give up on your marriage, and forfeit the possibility of reaping a happy marriage? Don't pluck the tender seedling. Instead, Tenderly nourish the seedling and patiently wait for the Lord to bring healing to your relationship with your spouse. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Galatians 6, 9. When Brent moved out in 2000, I thought he would change his mind rather quickly and return home within a couple of months. This did not happen. As a matter of fact, he didn't even return home within a couple of years. 
It took four years of fighting before I saw any evidence of God working in Brent's life. I sold in tears and had patience, and now I am reaping in joy as Brent's wife and mother of Madison, Samuel, Daniel, Anthony Joseph, and Michael Shepherd. Brent's favorite Bible verse says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 24, 13. Endure hardness like a good soldier for Jesus, and have patience as you look to him to save your marriage. If you fail to endure hardness and fight for your marriage, the likelihood of it being saved is greatly diminished. Therefore, make a commitment to keep praying for your marriage no matter how long it takes. If you fail to see results in a week, a month, or even a year, have patience and keep praying. Harvest times vary, so no matter how long it takes, have patience and keep praying. Your marriage is worth it. Job, a faithful soldier in the Lord's army, gives us an excellent example of patience. He patiently endured hardness and is described as perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Job 1.1 1, 1. Satan requested and received permission from God to test Job's loyalty to him. Satan wanted to see if Job would remain faithful if his blessings were taken away. So during the testing period, Job lost his children, his livestock, and many of his servants. How did Job respond? Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1, 20 and 21. Job praised God, trusted him, and remained loyal to him. What a powerful example for us to follow. Later, Satan smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, Job 2, 7. Job continued to remain loyal to God. In the midst of his test, Job continued to speak words of faith. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23, 10. Job's words came to pass, and he came forth from the test purified and refined. Job patiently endured, and he was rewarded. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. Job 42, 10, 12, and 13. Are you ready for the Lord to turn your captivity, bless you, and give you more than you had before? Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. James 5:11. Hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord, soldier. He is working all things out for your good. His timing is not our timing. His timing is much better than ours. The Lord is ready, willing, and able to give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 61, 3. But you must fervently pray, identify Bible promises, give thanks, and have patience. Now let's take time for testimonies. <music> 